Good morning, everyone. So we, this is the next episode to my Christmas series. And now I think what we're going to be doing is mostly TNs. Um, I am making TNs to sell. And I'm going to have four of this size, which I think was an A6 size um, TN. I have, you know, picked up lots of books. Or journals or notebooks from the Dollar Tree mostly and they even had these weekly planners which I've, I'm going to be using now the color might not coordinate as far as this but you know you can always put tape on it and whatever so I never did get any kind of monthly planner in this size I only have it in the bigger one which would be in the B6 so and these books here they're not all the same size. These are 4x6 and these is just slightly shorter and a little wider. But they will work together in the same size TN. <clears throat> and the A6 is... Um, it says it's shorter but wider than the personal size. And it is... The exact measurements would be 4.13 inches by 5.83. Okay, now there's a note because I have a guide that I printed out and I'll try to remember to put the link to that um, website that I always refer to, but this time I printed it out. Um, it's called growingupgoddess.com in case I forget and it is Guide to Traveler's Notebook Sizes. So, <clears throat> in the note to the A6 it says many people use A6 to describe inserts that are exactly 4 by 6 but the exact measurements are listed above. So if you want to get technical, it's 4.13 by 5.83. And again, most people just use 4 by 6. Use what you have on hand. And this probably is closer to that 4.13. I don't know. Um, we're going to have a guest. She likes to come around in the mornings when I'm working here. And please do not sit. Because sometimes she'll just pull up her buns. There you go. I also, I'm going to be using stuff like these. These are from the Dollar Tree, these two here. And I think these will go great. You just cut the back off and then you have a little card insert that you can use. You can laminate it, turn it into a bookmark. It might be, whoops, I'm sorry. It'll be too big for this. Although, if I try, I probably could use it as a bookmark. But, you know, I picked up stuff like this. This is from Target, and this is a great size for here. These are just cards. They have this this year. And I have some other ones, too. So, you know, if you can't find actual journal cards, or if your paper doesn't have cutouts, look to something that's not meant for that, like gift cards and um, money envelope cards and greeting cards and stuff like that. You could always scan them also and make them the size that you need, which I probably will do with a few. And then I also have actual cards. Let me see if I can get it. I only have a few of these cards. I don't know why I wrote on this back one here, but I don't have too many. I found these also at Tuesday morning a while back. So, um... But these are more like to and from. So I don't even know if I'll be... This is okay. This old Christmas tree. Um, that won't be okay. So stuff like that. You know, have ready in your arsenal. And then I got other things. I have... I like to make shakers. So aside from my own sequin mixes, I also have... From Natasha Scrapper Corner. I'll put the link down below. She sells all kinds of goodies. But um, here's one of the guest, guest design team goodies. So that would be fun. And then I also like to add charms. And this is from her shop too. So I think they're sold two in a set. So, you know, if you, whatever you think you want to have. Watch a lot of videos, you know. If you like what you see and then you want to have that. Just, you know, get all your stuff ready. And, <clears throat> yeah, another thing that you could use in your um, traveler's notebook is wrapping paper. Now, you can use them as is and just stick it onto cardstock. You Maybe stick it onto one of these so you have a double-sided paper. 
or scan them okay so I picked this up at Target and <clears throat> it was only a dollar it's upside down <laughs> it was only a dollar so I am going to use this with this one because I thought it kind of coordinated a little bit um, I just wanted to have a little more options so we got that and then I like to put a pen and a pen holder so at the Dollar Tree I found these and they have a red cap and then binder clips because um, I make my own pen loop or pen holder and this is just a regular binder clip and there's actually a smaller one with this elastic you know that'll fit exact width and you just you know put elastic here this is from Hobby Lobby so that's another thing you're gonna need is elastic if you're gonna do that <clears throat> and then you just clip it to um, your book and you put your pen in so quite simple that was my laundry because I have to do house chores and projects at the same time um yeah so collect all your stuff elastic now I have a box of elastic but what I'm gonna use here is this one this I found at Joann's this year and they had them um, last time I picked these up they were 60 off 60% so from $4.99 this is with the ribbon and the trim for Christmas is that focus and they have also one that is I didn't pull it out that's um, white silver and gold I believe and the white one is iridescent I have to pull it out because I also want to use that and these are elastic so you get three different options here and then for the pen loop <clears throat> I will pull this out now I put everything in a different spot so here's the <clears throat> the other one I stocked up on these because these you could use any time of the year the red one you could use for Valentine's as well I'm hoping that they come up with a pink one for the pen loops I just use these flat elastics from Hobby Lobby okay and now they have I think they changed it out to this brand it's all the same but you see how there's different types and they're all elastic so these are the ones that I use and I'm gonna have to pull out what I'm gonna be using this year so I'm gonna pull this out and then there's also I love the glittery ones and I think this is great for Christmas for the holidays so we're gonna pull that out <clears throat> oh, come on. and I don't think I need no so I think we're gonna to stick to these two colors I don't have a green or red I don't really like those two so although they probably do have those colors Okay, so um, I meant to record myself as I am cutting, but what I am doing is um, I'm cutting all the pieces per planner. So I'm making four, but instead of cutting everything like all four covers and then, you know, I'm doing the set first. So the covers, this is actually going to be my dashboard and this is all one collection. And I was about to cut, what else did I need that needs lamination? I was about to cut the bookmark. And um, so let me tell you what the size of the cover is. I decided to just to keep my original size that I had in the past. I had used one that size and I kind of looked back on it and I thought, well, it's wide enough. So I'm using the paper from the collection. And then the uh, wrapping paper that I had copied and printed so that I could have a firm piece to work with instead of trying to glue the wrapping paper down. Although you can do that, um, sometimes it's a little difficult because wrapping paper is so thin. So I went ahead and did that. I'm going to adhere the two together. But the size of this is uh, 9 and 3 quarters in length by six and a quarter in height and you also got to take into matter the lamination is going to come out a little bit so that gives you another about a quarter of an inch so you know your total measurement after the plastic or the lamination would probably be about 10 inches this way and uh, six and a half probably um, it just gives you enough overhang 
to cover up all your inserts and stuff so nothing is sticking out too much as far as the side and nothing should be sticking out you know up and down so that's that and I'm going to adhere the two together with um, I'm trying to think if I want to, I think I'm just going to use wet glue so that I don't get too much uh, separation when I fold this because sometimes if you don't glue it right in the middle and when you fold it up it wants to separate, the paper wants to separate when you do two sheets together like so. And I'm sorry if I keep hitting the camera thing. Okay, so then your dashboard, now it, it doesn't matter. Um, this is going to work for any size. All you got to do is know what your insert size is. So being that I'm using 4x6 inserts, the dashboard, if you're making the laminated version of a dashboard, is going to be two pieces of you know, 4x6. So it's going to be one 4x6 for your left and one 4x6 for your right. And that goes for any size um, inserts that you do, B6 or whatever. You're just going to make sure that your left and right covers are the same size and when you laminate it you're going to have a space in between about an eighth of an inch or so you see my little so about so and then when you fold everything after it's been laminated you got that space to insert your book and since this paper is not double-sided i have to do two i don't like to have a white so i think this is going to be my inside and this is my outside yeah i think that's so i'm just stacking it up all together and putting it to the side. Now I am going to glue them together and round my corners. Um, well, maybe I won't round my corners this time. I think I'm only going to round the outside. I did that last time and it was perfectly fine. Um, plus, the inserts are not rounded and I really don't want to go back and round all these. So I think I'm just going to leave that except for the cover. Now for my, my bookmark, I don't have in my little because I do keep things written down when I figure out what sizes I need. I actually just tore these out of my older planner, but I don't have clear pockets, cut off, colorful. Nope, I don't have the actual size for that. What you need to do is you just take your inserts. Now, you can have anything. You could use anything for a bookmark. You could just take a tag and stick it in and it's a bookmark or a page marker. Um, but I like mine to sort of be, let's say this is going to be it, right? I kind of want mine to be um, shorter this way, so it's not protruding as you can see here. And then over here, if I'm going to put something like a word up here, I want the actual paper to be lower or at the edge of this. And then I stick whatever's going to be like a tab that's going to be out. So you want it to be shorter. Um, smaller than the 4x6 or depending on what size um, insert you're using. So let's uh, see here. I've got two sheets here that I want to use and this is um, a brown like wood grain and then some I think those are like snowflakes and then a peppermint one which I thought was cute. So we're just going to go ahead and cut those together. I just I'm doing them at the same time. And for now, that's all that I'm going to be cutting. I'm going to do this three more times with three different other paper pads. And then just stack all the papers together on one side and then glue them um, together and then just have them ready. Okay, so now, four by six, right? So we're going to do it, where's four? We're going to do it shorter. And again, it's going to get laminated, so you want to give that extra... Um, for the lamination so I'm gonna do three and a half it might be too short but it does not need to be exact and I'm gonna go by these measurements here or my ruler over here so I don't cut all the way down and cut let's see six I don't even know what kind of tab I'm gonna use yet so we're just gonna cut up to let's see whoops it just moved six um, I'm gonna do it to the six for now and then turn this around this way because I need to see. And then let's see, that's six. So I'm going to cut um, 
for the lamination. I'm going to do five and a half. So I'm only cutting down this part here to five and a half instead of six. I think that'll be fine. You're going to get extra an extra border with your laminate and then if you're going to put okay see I don't have to cut the whole thing out. Alright so my back in front of my upcoming bookmark and we're just going to stack that to the side and since I didn't record myself doing the other parts one thing I do like to do so I know what paper stack goes with what is just keep these and I'm going to know which is which because this is the smallest piece. I'm just going to keep this together with the paper collection and put it to the side. And now I'm going to work with the next one just so you can see me cutting the, um, the other one. So I'm going to use this collection here with this. This was the this and I actually managed to fix the coloring as close as possible to the original wrapping paper from Target um, and I just reprinted it I left I forgot to do the border the white border but that's okay there's a lot of print on here I think I'll be able to use most of this and this was the closest thing to that that I could find um, to match there is a penguin and there is a snowman in here plus the green is in here too so we're gonna go ahead and use this pack that I found a Tuesday morning called everybody loves Christmas It's from Echo Park um, ooh, good grief. Oh, I'm so sorry not to mention this thing that's holding my camera is loose again I have to get my husband to tighten it up and honestly, I think I'm going to invest in an even better camera holder. I've seen some that mount on walls and have a better grip on the camera and I can move it around more. This one, because I do move this a lot, it just gets messed up and I'm getting tired of having something in my way. So I think, which way do I want my stripes? <laughs> Here's what I do. I put it back to back and then I look and see how is it going to look. I kind of like vertical. I mean horizontal stripes. I don't know. Let's just start cutting. And this thing keeps popping out. Is it just me? Does this just... I know it's got a spot for it to come out and go in, but it comes out too much. Okay, I'm going to cut one at a time here because I want to try to save as much of these little guys as possible. So, uh, let's see, it is six and a quarter again, six and one quarter. I think right there would be good. Yeah, I'm not cutting too much off here. By nine and three quarters. So, I think, let's see how it looks here. I want to try to save. If this is if I'm gonna save this guy. I don't like seeing partial. If I cut off of this way, okay, I'm gonna cut off this end and then use this end as my front. So I'm trying to get all the characters in here. So even though they're all going different directions, at least this way I'll have snowman, fox, and a penguin here. And I don't know what that little smudge is there, but it's there. Okay, so we got that. And then again, which way did I want my stripes? I like horizontal stripes, so let's just cut that down now. Six and three quarters by nine and three quarters. I feel like I want to take off some of that black because there's three lines of black and I don't want, I don't know why, I just want to leave two black lines. <laughs> there. Okay. So this should be a cover like that. See? Okay, so your inserts again, 4x6, we are going to cut this. Oh, let me do this first. Let me cut this border off. I can't take this. Oh, okay. 
I didn't have that issue with my old trimmer. You know, and I love this trimmer, but that thing keeps coming off. So this should be a 12 inch paper, right? Yeah, okay. So I need to cut four inch by six, right? So I should be able to do this and then um, I'll be fine, right? Yeah, I think so. So we're just gonna cut a strip, a four inch strip. And then cut this again in half, six inches. Now you would have to do it twice if you need to cover the back, but I'm going to leave this like this. That is my dashboard. Okay, and this is the part where I would stick the sticky notes because it's less stuff and you're going to put sticky notes that you, you want to see. And that's the front and the back of that. Okay, so this was my cover and then my sticky notes. I mean my dashboard and I just showed you already in the last paper stack the page marker so I'm not going to record that part I'm going to go ahead and get off camera and do that I'm going to cut some more and then I'll be right back okay you guys so I just turned on my laminator and um, I pulled out some punches because I need to put some tabs on my page marker so um, this is what I've been using or this particular shape here and this is a great shape tab it's two and a half inch from the paper studio so it's Hobby Lobby and then this one here I think it's Martha Stewart because it's white is just a scallop circle so I'm not sure which ones I want to use or maybe I'll just mix you know do some with this and then some with the other one and I also wanted to bring out some of the other pads that I have just to mix it in and so that I would use these um, let's see yeah I probably will just mix in because like this one here has some pink in it so I might just add some stuff from here and then this one and this one what do I have here I just kind of like the small print here so let's just cut this and see how it looks with the scallop circle and I'm kind of not wanting to do the whole thing but because it's just going to take up that much okay so what I'm going to do is cut it twice and where's my booklet? Okay, so let's just say here's my insert, right? And it's going to fit in there. It's going to have the laminated border around that. So it's going to be almost exact. And then we've got this coming out. So I think that is cute. So we're going to do this twice. So that it doesn't just look like this. So we'll do one more time. Oops, wrong one. Um, I probably will cut some in that other pattern just for fun. But again, I'm, I'm using the smaller pads because it has smaller print. Now we're going to make sure that we get it lined up right. Um, maybe I want this side to show. Yeah, I'm going to do that because this seems like too much. It almost gets lost in that pattern. Okay, we're just going to use this type of adhesive that I use. I find this usually at Walmart, but it's sold everywhere. And halfway about, yay. Okay, so this is going to go more than halfway down. I don't think we need to go that far up because all this is going to protrude from your planner and now we're just going to make sure we do the right side do the opposite side now just need something to hold it in place while we laminate and then just line it up with the other scallop I'm not exactly in the middle here but that's okay so that is down and I did want to round these corners Let's see if I can still do that. 
certain ones I'm going to round my corners. <clears throat> I should be able to still get in here. No, can't. It's too late. Is it too late? Yeah, I'm going to have to do this by hand. Yeah, I can't get in there. So I'm going to just make sure I do that first. Okay, so I'm going to round those by hand. And then um, I'm going to leave these blank. I'm not going to write anything on there. Um, they will be laminated. So it can be added on later with a sticker or something. So I just wanted to show you that before I laminate. And let's try the other shape now. So... This goes with this collection. Now we're going to try this one here for the brown side, and then I gotta pick one out for the other side. So, trying to show a lot of like so. that looks before I do another one. This is going to go here. Yeah. I'm trying to use these scraps that I've had since last year and trying to get some of those little cookies in the picture. All right, so let's see. That's going to go here and this one here. That's fun. Okay, I think we'll do that. Now remember, let's do this first. Okay. And there is an upside to this. Something around this thing. Now I'm gonna go past the edge so it doesn't stick out too, too much. Just a little bit down. And you could fold these in half and just have a flat tab with a design on the bottom, which is fine too. But I like the shape of this on top. <gasps> Oops, it's upside down. <laughs> Thank God that came off. Okay. Alrighty, so I think that's all I'm gonna show you as far as that much. This goes over here. And now I'm just going to round all of my corners. This is a 3 8 It's one of my favorite size rounding or rounders. <laughs> Corner chomper. And See, I'm not doing the dashboard. That's going to stay like that. This is the last. Well, I got two more page markers to do. So I'm just going to do this and then I'll laminate and then I'll be back. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, everybody. So um, I have laminated as much as I could for now. I think I got the most most of it done for the four planners that I'm going to be doing. Now what you're looking at is some window clings from the Dollar Tree. For Halloween I did something similar and I actually took window clings from Halloween and laminated the images and just tucked them into my planner. So I did do that since I had the laminator going on. This is only one of the sheets that I had picked up. I had got in several because huh, I couldn't decide and I might try something a little different for the B6s when I get there but and here's the other one so you know they're only a dollar and you don't have to use them on your windows and then another thing that I laminated oh let me show you how those came out since I needed to use up my laminating sheets I don't just you know put one piece and if I got a lot of space just throw that out so here, excuse me, here are the 
window clings and now they are transparent they don't have a stickiness a, a sticky back so they won't stick to um, anything but you can always use clear tape or something if you want to back it onto something so that you can see you know it won't see through but I don't mind the transparency there's a little bit of glitter in these also so I'm just gonna fussy cut them later this was my favorite because it's got the cup, coffee cup but that's how it looks and then um, I had these from the Dollar Tree as well these doilies that um, you get 20 for a buck and I went ahead and laminated them because I thought these would be really cute dashboards as well so I did four although I have one set planner that doesn't have any of these colors but I'm gonna see if I can mix it in um, so just imagine you cut down to what you need and then you can fold it in half and you got a laminated doily so I'm gonna use this technique with other doily so that's got to get cut down and it's so thin there's no air pockets in this at all so you can actually cut wherever you need to cut all right so I had thin, did that and then I remembered that I also wanted to do my little washi sample pieces now you can actually use this spare acetate here this is the um, laminated sheets so I would save whatever is big enough um, that I would cut off and I could use this as an, an acetate and you can put um, like glitter or some flat type of sequence super flat and then make a fun acetate out of that but what I did was I laminated these tags and these here come in a set these are from Target and then this come in a set as well from Target so I think there was eight in a pack and I got those this year and those are going to be my washi sample um, cards and I just took off the ribbon I will be repunching the holes but here they are laminated I'm going to cut them out repunch the hole and then tie on um, I don't know if I still have it but something either a ribbon or twine so they still have the holes and you can you can even put a little piece of chain in there and hang it in your planners like if you have a ring bound planner and then put your samples around it and you know like this one here it doesn't matter if you cover it up but if you don't really want to cover it up you can put like one piece of sample or whatever but it's just a fun way um, to do your sample so then here's I stacked them all together but in collections so here are here's the covers dashboard and my page marker so I have to trim everything down and then we're going to get to put together a planner so I put them all together in a way that I know that you know they go so we're just going to go ahead and cut one down for now I'm not going to cut this stuff this is just fussy cutting around um, let me just put this underneath this stack here I'm going to scoot this over a little bit so I don't hopefully don't whack it too much and get my paper trimmer again all right so I would of course cut everything down at once and then do any folding or corner rounding now for some reason when I try to round my corners with the plastic with my corner chomper it doesn't cut so I still end up having to go by hand and you know cut it with scissors so I just go ahead and do it with scissors when it's laminated so I mean there's no sense of going around twice this part I gotta cut by hand anyway and then we got this and as much as I try I never get the two papers lined up but that's okay it's not that bad actually okay I think right there And again, I left these unrounded, but I am going to round it a little bit with my scissors so I don't get that super sharp piece. Now normally, um, if your books are rounded already, I would go ahead and round it all to match. But since the books are not, 
I'm gonna leave them like that. So I'll come back later and round those off with my scissors. Just wanna um, get as much done as possible. Okay, let's cut this piece first. And I did run a lot of this through the machine twice to make sure, you know, to get as much of the air pockets that form around the edges out. The doily, since they're so flat, you only need to do it once. Okay, so that's done. So we're just going to do that set for now. And, you know, I'll come back later and cut the rest. I just wanted to do the corners and the, this part here. And we're going to go past the air pocket. I don't know if you could see right there by the cardstock, there's an air pocket. So you don't want to cut into that. You want to cut around it. Just leave a little bit so that it's all attached together. You do have to be careful with scissors. They can kind of take off on their own and cut into something that you might not want cut. So that looks good. And then we're going to do the corners here. And here. So just a quick look. This would go in. And you see it's like perfect. And it'll just peak on the top. And we will be adding pockets to that. Okay, so then next is my dashboard, and we're just going to cut a little bit. We don't want that super pointy piece sticking out so it'll stab you later. And then I'm also going to cut a notch on there so it doesn't cut into the elastic. So I'm flattening this out into a point, and I'm just going to cut like a little rounded notch there. I'm going to do the same thing here. I missed one corner. I'll have to come back to that. This way it doesn't cut into the elastic that this is going to go into. Okay, and then I forgot this one corner. Actually, this is kind of long here. Alright, and if you notice, I actually put a sticker on this one that came with the collection. I thought the stripe was just a little boring, so Although you can decorate this after the fact, um, I kind of wanted to put that in there. So hopefully that's okay for the buyer. Okay, and then this is one that we have to do the corners. Make sure I got all four. Okay, so that's that. Let me um, get rid of all these bits and pieces and shake the camera. Sorry for that. Seriously, I'm going to get a better one, even if it costs me money. <laughs> all right, so we've got um, our cover. We've got a dashboard, even though I'll be making a second one, and a page marker, right? All this is going to go in here plus the booklets and I will be making some of the pockets and stuff but since you know I have, I'm going to go back and cut everything else later and I'll come back to the this later and see because I'm not sure exactly where it's going to get inserted but it's definitely going to be like a little dashboard you know what I wish I had was some vellum with Christmas print so I might attempt to print on vellum with some Christmas print to add in there too because I have been liking having a lot of stuff in my planners and um, recently I added let's see if I can find it here vellum this is store-bought vellum in my planner and I just you know people like the feel and the sound of it I don't know I just think it's pretty so yeah and also we're going to be making a folder for this. I've done a tutorial on that one, I'm pretty sure. Uh oh, did I change? 18, no. Okay. We're going to be making a folder 
and what else do we need to make? I'm going to do the elastic, the folder, and then, you know, just add all the goodies. So let's just go ahead and continue here. Now, um, I use for my holes this Cropodile 2. That's what I have, although I would like to get the other one that's handheld, but I don't know how I'm going to do with that with my arthritic hands, so it may or may not be a good thing. I use that to make my holes and I do the smallest hole which is 1 8 on here and then my elastic so for this one we're gonna do there's a lot of green so I'm thinking I might go with the green yeah we might go with the green and I will be using my scoreboard people usually well, most people usually score their paper before they laminate it. I actually do it after the fact. It works out better for me that way. Now if I can find my little, my favorite tool. This is the Martha Stewart one because it's nice and thin. And other ones that I have are just too thick and don't fit in this thing here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is find my center. Um, in the past, I've actually been trying to guesstimate here. But that doesn't work out so it does work better when this is thinner and I'm just going to mark my middle okay so that's my middle and we are going to score right there which is actually on the five because after I laminated this turned out to be a 10 inch length so we put our first score mark and then let me see because I forgot how I made this last time I think we did let's see uh, score three-eighths I'm sorry three-eighths of an inch okay I think that's good one, one, two, and three. Just those little lines. And then one, two, and three. And then we go the other way. One, two, three. One, two, and three. That's not. Whoops. I did it again. Okay. Well, there's going to be an extra line in that one. So I do apologize, but because my eyes don't work even though I'm wearing glasses okay so we have one two three four five let's ignore that last one okay and should be able to I'm gonna go ahead and score it now or fold it over now it should meet evenly on both sides right one here okay so it yep it's pretty good okay so then it's easy to find where you're gonna be punching your holes because now I have the exact middle line there and that's where we're gonna start and hopefully I don't get confused with that one what I'm gonna do is try and flatten that mark a little bit to disguise it <laughs> and make my hole we're going to start in the center line so that's the third one and I'm going to show you how far in I went that's like just less than an eighth of an inch from the paper line and then we're going to go over one over here and then one on the next line they're all going to be on line so that they're all even evenly spaced okay and then do it the other way let me get this out of the way here one in the middle and one on the right and left of that line I think I went a little too far down but 
we've got our three holes and three holes if you were going to do a this is going to be for four elastics only I have a six elastic uh, B6 if you wanted to do that you would need first off a little bit longer on your cover so that you can fit all those extra inserts and then you would want to move all all your holes over so that you can do four holes in here so they wouldn't be right on that middle line okay so now we need to find our middle and I'm never good at this part so I am gonna go and eyeball about yay and put a little black mark where's my middle okay mm -hmm. Down there. That should be close enough. And then I'm just going to punch my hole in there. I feel like it's not in the middle, but maybe there. Okay, so then we have a middle hole for your strap. Okay, so scoot that to the side. We're just going to go ahead and, and put the elastic on now. I'll come back to everything else later. And this is the one again that I found at Joann's. So it's stretchy. It's actually kind of tight, which is good. And I think I said I was going to do the green with this one. How does that look? I like the metallic. I do like how that green looks. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. And for this, you need, I do have that written down, 31 inches, at least 31. So that's 12, 24. I am noticing that this here is fraying a lot more than the ones from Hobby Lobby so I'm probably gonna need to burn that I normally don't because the ones from Hobby Lobby barely does that okay 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 what did I say 31 so it actually gives you extra more than you need but um, that's what I like see I don't know if this is gonna stay but I'm gonna worry about that after I thread this on Okay, so what we're going to do is thread this, and I do have many tutorials on this. You can always skip this part. I'm just going to go ahead and start threading. I'm going to do one through the outside, up through the inside, and you're going to kind of hold it down here just enough so that you can make a knot. Okay. Then you're going to take that other end and go again from the outside through the inside, and you're going to go to the top hole there. That's usually where I go. You can go the other way, but it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you go through an opposite hole. And then we're going to go straight down and follow our line from the inside out. I'm just going to hold that. Let's see if I can get this in there. See how it's, it is fraying. So I'm going to get a lighter and hopefully I don't burn the house down because I'm afraid of fire. <laughs> All right, so we went to, we followed that line, went down through, and then back up into the middle one again. And now we're going to go back up and go through that first hole again, through that first hole, and pull. And then we're going to go through this other hole down. Okay, and now we're going to go straight down. To the following hole that we haven't done yet and then back into the middle and I'm going to tighten some of this stuff up back through the middle again do I even have a lighter <laughs> and pull now I want to make sure that everything is taut like so I like to keep them nice and straight and a little tight And we're going to go ahead and make a knot. This stuff is stiffer. 
I don't know if it's the material, but it's a little stiffer than the Hobby Lobby version. And the um, ends kind of fray. Even See, it's like a little too stiff for this type of job. It doesn't want to not. There we go. Maybe it won't fray. But you know what? Now we're going to just cut off a little bit. Not too much. And there. So will this fray? Or is it just... Yeah, let me go and get the lighter real quick. I don't have a lighter. I have this thing. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to burn myself probably. Please be careful when doing this. Okay, that that did that. Okay, that's good. I do I really don't like flames or blades. But at least I know that's not going to keep fraying and since these are going to go for sale. So there's that part. I do love the way the green looks in here. So now let's go ahead and do our strap um whatever you want to call it. You can always use a different color. But what I'm going to do is insert, not insert, but I'm just going to put something in here to kind of show me how much, like maybe four of these, how much I need. I'm going to just wrap it around. Oh, what am I saying? You need 14 inches. <laughs> I do that after the fact. You need about 14 inch strip here. 12, 13, 14. Okay, and now I can do what I was gonna do. This way I know where to knot it. So we're just going to hold it evenly and knot it right there. Double check. I think that's probably good. I'm just gonna make it tighter now and cut a little off. Just leaving enough so if you want to undo it. Although usually you could just change out this whole thing, but you can always add charms or stuff to it. Let me um, burn my. I'm gonna do this off camera because I feel like I'm gonna catch my camera on fire. <laughs> That should be good. Let's insert this. And then I'm going to do a dry run and insert some stuff in there just to see how it looks. Because I want to make sure it's going to come out fine. So I'm just going to insert these things that I already have. The cool thing about these is they're stapled in. So I don't need to... Um, at least these are stapled. And let me just take this out. Some of these are cool. Okay, there's one hiding back here. And I always do this before I continue and just test it out, make sure it's it's working the right way. These are going to be nice and snug in here. Okay. And there we go. That's probably my husband saying he's on his way. Can I make some coffee? Okay, so there's my A6. And now, okay, I'm going to continue. I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything else out and do all this stuff and then I'll come back for the next step. So I'm going to do a voiceover for this part. I'm going to be making the folder and I'm showing you right here how one of the TS is looking so far with the inserts. I 
I had just, you know, did some cardstock covers for the booklets. And that's the folder we're going to work on. It's got four pockets, so it's something a little different for me. And you're going to need a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock for this. It doesn't have to be double-sided, but this one, this one page is. I'm just going to cut off that little border there so I get so I have a 12 by 12 sheet we're going to be scoring it next and I'm going to score it um, with the paper upright we're going to score it at 2 inches 6 inches and 10 inches so two six and ten and then i'm going to flip it to the side and score it at six then we're going to cut off the bottom two pieces on the edges and it's hard to see on this pattern paper but you're going to cut at the score marks the bottom left and the right pieces that were scored. So it's a two inch by six inch little piece that we're going to cut off. And I'm saying the bottom because if you have a directional paper, this is going to be the bottom part. And the big flap that's left on the bottom is actually going to get folded up and that's going to create two pockets. And they're going to be top loading pockets. So we cut those out, we don't need them. And you wanna cut a little bit past your score marks so there's nothing in the way when you fold everything over. So that bottom part is gonna get folded up, creating your top loading pockets. The two ends, they're going to fold over, creating side pockets. Then you're going to see um, what I do to that inside flap. I make those little cutouts so you can put your fingers, you know, to grab things. So there is the side. You see, I had to cut a little more because the paper was a little too long. So I actually end up trimming a little bit off that side there. Okay, so at that point you could leave it there. You don't have to even use the pockets on the top. You can actually seal it. But here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hole punch. And I'm not sure what size it is. I want to tell you it's about 2 inches. And I folded that over. I'm going to cut the two, two sides at the same time. To create that like notch out. It's a little hard for me to do this. Especially with the camera in the way. Okay, so I'm just showing you what it is. And I'm going to open that up. So you have two side pockets there, left and right. And we're going to glue right in the middle just to seal that in. Now I'm showing you the glue that I'm using. I actually put that inside that little bottle that I found at Joann's just to have a fine tip. So we're just going to glue right in the center, right at the fold line. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about gluing the two, the left and the right side. Because once I fold over those flaps, it kind of seals it anyway. But you'll notice that those flaps kind of cover up my little half circles that I made. I'm just creasing everything. So right here I kind of show you a little better. 
and we're going to open them up and we're going to cut um, a triangle off from the fold line and then I'm just going to round that little edge there because I don't like you know sharp points and that's going to create our folders for the inside and all you got to do is glue the bottom part so we're going to do that And if it really bothers you, you can always seal down those other pockets that are lifted right now. You could see, I didn't seal it. I just left it that way. I feel like nothing's going to come out there because once you fold those other flaps down, it kind of closes it. I ended up not putting enough glue, so I had to come back and re-glue that. You'll see that it pops open right there. We're getting close to the end now. I'm just going to be sealing the other side. And I'm also going to be um, rounding off the corners of the part that is going to get strapped in by the straps in your TN. I was just making sure that that was down. It wasn't going to come open on me. So I'm just kind of showing you where the pockets are and all the different places you can hide stuff. So we're going to um, crease it a little more and just make sure it's all nice and flat. Then I'm going to grab my corner rounder. I'm using the 3 8 side. And I'm just going to do the corners on the inside, the part that the elastic is going to sit on. And that just kind of helps from bending where the elastic is. So we're pretty much done. I'm going to insert that. I'm going to show you a little more. And that's pretty much it. So um, thank you all for watching. And definitely we'll see you guys next time. Bye now.